this is Andrei Sannikov on Belarus file. In this edition I would like to offer you a clip from CNN discussion on Belarus in the program of Christian Amanpour. Живи Беларусь! Лонли Беларусь! Foreign Minister Likaivichus, thank you so much indeed for joining us. And now for more on this by somebody who really knows the kind of pressure that Svetlana is under. Uh, somebody who ran against Lukashenko ever since he resigned as his deputy foreign minister. Andrei Sanikov ran a presidential campaign in 2010 and was jailed shortly afterwards. And he's joining us now from Warsaw, Poland, where he lives in exile. Andrei Sanikov, welcome to the program. Uh, I wonder if you would just um, comment on what I was asking the foreign minister about the state of mind of of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, of what she may have been saying, either under duress or not, we don't know, um, and, and what you know about the kind of pressure that she's, she's been under and is now. No, I think uh, I agree with uh, Minister Linkevich. Uh, uh, I think that definitely she was speaking under duress, and uh, you should uh, re realize that it was a special KGB operation to get her out of the country. And it is not over yet. The special KGB operation is uh, uh, something that they plan very carefully, uh, not as one uh, time event, but uh, to, to continue. And they probably had some uh, very uh, specific instructions for Svetlana and uh, blackmailing Svetlana with uh, something that uh, is quite difficult to digest for her. So we, we, we shall not um, take anything for granted that is coming out now from her or her team. We sh just right. have to accept the fact that Svetlana is out of the country, but the protest against the regime and the dictator continue. So that's really important context. Both you and the foreign minister, you know, warned us not to take everything that she posted there um, at face value because we don't know the kind of pressure she's under. When you say it's a KGB operation to get her out, um, you're talking about what the foreign minister said. She was basically given two options, get out or face unspecified, but we all know what consequences if she stayed in. She's out. What do you think is in her future if she wants to continue in politics, given that she is also the accidental politician. She was just sort of running in her husband's place. He was meant to be running until he was jailed. Absolutely. And uh, earlier you mentioned that there were some other figures. Uh, no, there were no, nobody else. Svetlana was quite courageous to step into uh, her husband's shoes and she was substituting him. And Sergei Tikhanovsky, who is now in jail in a very difficult situation, was the candidate of protest in Belarus. Uh, so why people supported Svetlana so massively in so big numbers? Because she was the candidate, the only candidate uh, who was running again against the regime. Others were fakes. So don't even mention the names and the numbers. There was Svetlana and Lukashenko. And uh, people supported Svetlana. Uh, and it was actually... I think the message uh, that Svetlana was uh, uh, deliver delivering is that I, I, I'm not a politician, you're right. I'm a novice. I don't have any specific program. Don't ask me about this program. But I'm here to organize early election without Lukashenko. I have to win for that, mm -hmm. and she won. And now we have to, to elect our, our new president without, without Lukashenko being a candidate. So that's down the line at some point, uh, you hope. But let, just let's go back to your experience. As I said, you tried this in 2010. You, you, you ran a presidential campaign. And you really suffered for that attempt. I mean, prison, torture, the whole lot. Tell us what happened just for the effrontery that you showed of taking part in, a, in what you hoped was a democratic process. Well, uh... Yes, I did suffer as my family, my wife, we were arrested together, but uh, the, also the, the several hundred of people did suffer. But Lukashenko, why we suffered? Because Lukashenko got scared on the 19th of December uh, 2010, because he never expected so many people telling him to step down. Uh, and that's why for the first time in the history of Belarus, he attacked us on the day of election. Never before he did that. He uh, preferred to wait because the cowards, you know, the cowards don't like to, to act, act 
cowardly openly. They wait till uh, till uh, there is an appropriate moment, and the appropriate moment was when the international observers left, and in, when international press left. But uh, in uh, 2010, he was so scared that he attacked us on the on the day of election. Today, I mean, in 2020, he is even more scared because he started to uh, throw in jail his uh, opponents, very strong opponents like uh, Sergei Tikhanovsky, the husband of uh, Svetlana or Viktor Babarika, the bank, uh, and uh, also the candidates that are usually very visible in the streets, like Nikolai Statkevich, who spent uh, five years in prison after 2010, or Pavel Severinets. So Lukashenko is scared. Lukashenko is trying to Mm -hmm. stop the protest and trying to show that he is in control of the country. He is not. He is not. He is usually propped by two forces. And we, we usually uh, tend to forget about one of them. Uh, one is Russia and Kremlin, and the other is West. And today, I don't know uh, whom, what to expect from the West, because the reaction is very mild, is very timid. And uh, without that, I think that uh, we, we, we might see more violence from the side of the, of the regime, of the dictatorial regime of Lukashenko. Andre, the, the reaction from uh, the Lithuanian foreign minister was not mild. I mean, he obviously knows the region better than most of the Westerners. He's had, you know, Lithuania has had its own fisticuffs with, with Russia, the Soviet Union in the past. So they know what's at stake. Um, and they're calling for transparency and, and maybe even sanctions again. So uh, I understand what you're saying. But so I guess what I want to ask you is what hope is there to challenge somebody like Lukashenko? And I want to again point out that when you were taken to prison, I mean, you and other inmates were put through humiliating, you know, strip searches. Uh, I think they even left a rope and a razor in your cell, uh, essentially inviting you to kill yourself. how, how, How brutal is it and how brutal was it for you? It is brutal, uh, but I still want to refer to what you said about uh, Mr. Nkavich's, Foreign Minister Nkavich's. Yes, his reaction in words was very strong, and I, I, I can feel that he is frustrated. There is, not, uh, that there is no more reaction, no strong reaction from the Brussels, because words doesn't matter now. We need sanctions, because people are being tortured, like I was tortured. I believe that the people today, like uh, Sergei Tikhanovsky, Nikolai Statkevich, Pavel Sverins, are being tortured much in a much uh, stronger way than I was tortured. And uh, Belarus is part of the International Conventions against, uh, Convention Against Torture, and there is no reaction. We need sanctions. We need sanctions about uh, on the people that are against the people that are torturing. You know, it's, it's a legitimate call for, 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 for Brussels to introduce the sanctions. And Linus was uh, say, telling about uh, his... He was kind of hinting on his frustration that there is strong, no, no more, no stronger reaction mm-hmm. on what is going on in Belarus. Because believe me, we are not kept in prisons in Belarus. We are tortured in prisons in Belarus. And that, that is something that is going on in Europe, not somewhere else where we know that the, mm. the despotism and the tyrannies are... Uh, blossoming, but uh, in, in, in Europe uh, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, on the border of European Union. Uh, Andre, finally, do you think that the protests in the street will put that kind of pressure not just on, on Lukashenko, but also send a clear message to Brussels and others in the West? In, in, do you think this is a moment that will last, or do you think it will be crushed? Uh, very good question, because uh, I think Belarusians will do everything uh, to, to get rid of this regime. Why Brussels is silent? I don't know. Why Brussels li- lifted sanctions? You mentioned that the sanctions were lifted because the conditions were met, or Linus mentioned that the conditions were met. Conditions were not met. Yes, a couple of uh, prisoners were released, but they we are not rehabilitated till this moment. And that was one of the conditions that European Union put forward to Lukashenko. So if they don't take strong measures, they will, uh, they will under, undermine their own security. I don't think that the protest will be crushed that easy in Belarus. And I do think that the, the, these are the last days of Lukashenko's regime. But a lot depends now on the attention, on the uh, adequate measures taken as regards Belarus, not to intervene into some internal affairs, but to save people's lives, 
because I was advising all the time for the leadership of the European Union, come on the day of election, especially when the regime is threatening with violence. Come and you can save people's life. Nobody was there. Nobody was even on uh, answering our calls. The famous question of Henry Kissinger, who is what is the phone number and whom I shall call in the European Union. I think in, in, in the case of Belarus, it is even, even more uh, important and urgent. There is no phone number for Belarus to call in Brussels. None. Because the, the new leadership of uh, European Union seems to forget what the conditions were put towards regime of Lukashenko to uh, improve the relation. And they started uh, improving okay. the relations with Lukashenko's regime without uh, any conditions. All right. All right. Well, listen, you, you have made your, your, your point loud and clear. Um, this is a platform. Hopefully people will hear what you say. It is democracy protest, protest happening in Belarus. Andrei Senikov, thank Absolutely. you so much.